Welcome to the Simple Doesn't Mean Easy podcast, where we are here weekly working at simplifying things in our lives one day at a time, one little step at a time. And together, we can do this. I'm your host, Michelle Visser, and today is episode 16 in season five, which is all about simple steps to improving our health. Today's episode, I am coming clean, (laughs) no pun intended, about my absolute last step that I have taken to try and simplify things in our home. I shouldn't say that. I'm sure there's plenty more things. That's really, yeah, I'm sure there's lots more things, but this is my most recent. Maybe that's what I should say, because I'm sure there's in the decade ahead, who knows what else I'm going to realize I should tackle. But currently, I'm still new to this one. I'm I'm a little bit embarrassed to say it because it's kind of a obvious thing, but I have never been concerned about detoxing our home as far as the chemicals that we bring in and that are surrounding us in our home. And honestly, it's overwhelming. If you think too deeply, you can really go down a deep, deep, dark trail trying to get rid of every possible toxic chemical that is associated with your home. So maybe that's one reason I've put it off. I honestly think I'm just a naive, a child of the eighties that, um, it was like the, the latest and newest, greatest thing to bring in like the scrubbing, scrubbing bubbles, you know, for the, for the cleaning the bathtub and, the the newest version of Lysol and the new smells and all of that, like great new things. Yay. The house is going to be cleaner. <laughs> um, my mom was not a germaphobe, but she definitely liked a very clean house. So anything that made her think it was a little cleaner was better. And my dad was an amazing gardener, but he got on that trail of all kinds of pesticides that were going to give him better crops. And in his older age, I had a few disputes with him over this, but he, he wouldn't give, he wouldn't budge. He, he didn't understand ever trying to go the natural way because trying to solve any problem the natural way, whether we're talking about our gardens or we're talking about our hand soap is never going to be um, as effective as perfect, as wonderful smelling, possibly, whatever the case is, you're almost always going to quote unquote, like the chemical laden toxic version better. And it's almost always going to appear at least to be more effective. So I don't know, for whatever reason, I have just in the past few years, little by little, tiny steps at a time, worked at getting rid of some of the toxic chemicals in the home and been creating some of my own DIY cleaners and soaps, et cetera. So that is what we are talking about today, making our homes a little less toxic. So first off, let's talk about why, why it even matters to make your own dish, liquid dish soap instead of buying Dawn or whatever the case is. Um, If you just do some Googling, you will often find that any specific chemical or chemical laden product you look up is deemed relatively safe, or they tell you safe if used as intended. Um, I went to the Environmental Protection Agency site and I read this. I'm just going to read this to you. Janitorial staff and others who perform cleaning can be exposed to concentrated cleaning products. However, proper training and use of the chemical management system, which is a set of formal procedures to ensure proper storage, handling, and use can greatly minimize or prevent exposure to concentrated cleaning products during handling and use. Many surfacants used to I'm sorry, in conventional products, biodegrade slowly or biodegrade into more toxic, persistent, and bioaccumulative chemicals. That was literally on the EPA's website. Like they're not trying to hide anything. Um, so I looked up exactly what is a surfacant. It's a primary component 
of cleaning detergents. The word surfacant means surface active agent. As the name implies, surfacants stir up activity on the surface that you're cleaning to help trap dirt and to help you remove it from the surface. But you know what? You also could just use a little more elbow grease, you know, rub a little harder and use less or no surfacants. Um, the molecular structure, it turns out, of the surfacant molecules reduces the surface tension of a liquid is what it's doing. And they make stuff slippery, basically. So they're used everywhere because so many products, the manufacturers want the surface to be slippery so that you feel like, oh, when I use this product, the pots clean up so quickly because it's making the surface slippery. So they're used in detergents and soaps and cleaners. And when I learned about surfacants, that was kind of one of the final steps, I think, for me to really start making more of my own DIY stuff. I've been making my own DIY hand soap for a long time. I think the first thing I started with was dryer balls. That's probably been four or five years now that I have never, I have not purchased a dryer sheet, but have been using balls. So we'll get to that. But um, there's so many other things that the surfacants are in that I was buying all the time and not even really thinking about it. Okay, so what's the big deal? Well, at a high enough concentration, the surfacants can be toxic to plants and to animals. They can increase the solubility of the other toxic substances in the pesticides as well. So they just encourage all these chemicals to get into our water supply. And then there's the VOCs, which stands for the volatile organic compounds that are found in cleaning products and that greatly impact even the quality of our air and our homes. The VOCs are actually a large group of chemicals that are found in many products that we use, not just cleaning products. I mean, they're, they're in products used to build our home and in the furniture that we're buying and our mattresses. Unfortunately, it's, it's impossible to completely rid our lives of VOCs. And a lot of them are just completely out of my control. But there are some that I can very easily eliminate. So that's where to start. Whenever you're feeling overwhelmed and you're like, oh my gosh, like I'm just, I'm just gonna die from cancer because of all the VOCs in my home. I'm killing my family. You know, you can quickly go down <laughs> that deep hole and get really depressed. But it is so much better to just have a hands-on approach and say, okay, let's be practical. What can I easily replace? What's really simple for me to make myself? Start there. And I tell you what, it actually makes you feel so much better. Even though you realize there are so many things out of your control, it feels really good to have these couple things that are totally in your control. On top of that, you don't have to like be running to the store to get more soap all the time. And you have, you can, you know, can buy your ingredients in bulk. You have what you need on hand. It feels so good to just go down to the root cellar and grab the couple ingredients I need and mix up my next batch of soap. And it also saves you a ton of money. So it definitely, it makes you feel like even though things are out of control, like it's kind of a little bit under your control. <laughs> so it's a good thing. Um, what else? What else? What else? In addition to the VOCs, oh, there's the artificial fragrances. Now we've talked about artificial flavorings in food and why it's so harmful, why it falls under propriet proprietary information that companies legally are allowed to keep it silent and not disclose what they're actually putting in their tea that have the different flavors or their food that's packaged and processed. They don't have to tell you all the ingredients, some of which might literally be chemicals, because it's considered proprietary information and they can just label it natural flavors. Well, it's this exact same idea with the fragrances and they can even call them natural fragrances, which makes them sound a little bit better. But um, the fragrances are so bad for us sometimes. They can greatly impact our allergies. They can like make our sinuses go crazy and inflame them. And of course it leads to more colds, more respiratory infection, all kinds of problems just because of one simple thing that's not simple at all, that sounds simple, I should say, labeled on the bottles of all these cleaners that we have in our home, the fragrances. 
um, the term, by the way, artificial fragrance can literally refer to more than 3,000 chemicals that go unnamed. 3,000. And a company doesn't have to disclose what those chemicals are if they can lump them under the term artificial fragrance. Okay. What can I control? I can easily control some of my cleaning supplies and some of my soap. And I can make sure that there are no VOCs, no surfacants, and no artificial fragrances in these cleaning products. So um, before I dive into, I'm going to actually share the actual recipes with you of the things that I make. Before I do that, I do have a list here I wanted to share of the things that maybe you can't control, but there are some tips to help you, to like, to help you feel less overwhelmed and to be able to reduce some of those chemicals from the things you can't totally eliminate. First of all, only buy what you need when it comes to things like paints and caulking and extra cleaners, solvents, because if you have, if you think, oh, it's a great sale on this paint and I'm going to use it next year too, or whatever the the thing is, those unused chemicals that are getting stored in your home somewhere are actually leaking and releasing VOCs into your air. So there's no need to stock up on it. Just get what you need that you need to use right now. And if you do have some unused amounts, be sure to store them in your garage or an outdoor shed, somewhere where you're not spending a lot of time, right? Not in the basement of your home, if you can avoid it dispose of the unused chemicals um, properly, you know, talk to your town officials about how to do that. And definitely pay attention to the ventilation of your home and the climate control, because if you can increase the amount of fresh air in your home, so, you know, spring and summer and fall, open up those windows whenever possible. And if you can also um, regulate the temperature you can use fans, you can keep the temperature and the humidity if possible, as low as possible, and yet staying comfortable. All of that is going to release the amount of off-gassing that can happen and um, try to perform you know, certain things whenever possible. Like if you're renovating certain things in the home, try and perform them at a time that everybody isn't going to be there, you know, if possible. So just simple things like that. But I think the ventilation is the huge key. And I think today, so many families get caught up in the air conditioner. Once you turn it on, you know, you kind of hate to let humidity seep back into the house. So you just want to let it run and run and run. And it's on all summer, but you're not getting any fresh air. So any VOCs or off-gassing that's happening is lingering. So whenever you can open up those windows, let that breeze flow through. Okay, so let's dive into some of those practical things and I'll share some of those. I, I, I want to say recipe really loosely because first of all, it's not a recipe. Second of all, some of them are so, so simple. Like the first one I'm going to start with, you can have your own hand soap with zero added anything if you simply have some Castile soap on hand and you can dilute it down to like one tenth, like literally in your soap dispenser, a tenth of the space filled up with the Castile soap and nine tenth of the space or 90% of it filled up with water. Give it a really good shake. And you do need to get a foaming dispenser because that's going to really let you maximize that amount of soap for the most amount of cleaning. Um, but it's really that simple. It's, it's just Castile soap and water. Um, I often will add essential oils for two reasons. One, because it just makes it really pleasant, and really nice smell. And two, there's extra cleaning and sanitizing that can go on depending on what oils you're adding. But it's it's really just two ingredients. And does water even count as an ingredient? You know, it's, <laughs> it's so simple. Um, as far as where to get the Castile soap, you can get it at most big box stores, you know, or Walmart. But you do want to check and make sure it's genuine. And I will always throw a lot of these ingredients I'm going to be talking to you about in with my next Azure Standard order. I don't know if I've talked about Azure Standard here on the podcast, but in an upcoming episode, we're actually going to talk more in depth about it because it's a fascinating way, a wonderful way to buy food and other products and just be assured of the quality. So I will often throw 
my ingredients for these recipes that I'm giving you today into my Azure standard order. Um, but you can pick this up in a lot of places. Um, as far as the essential oils, I actually have found one a few years ago that I really like. Bar and Wild essential oils are great because they offer you the really high quality standards that you really do want to look for in your essential oils because otherwise they're going to be totally watered down or not at all what they are saying they are. So you want the high quality, but I personally am not into the multi-level marketing. No, thank you. So I've stayed away from all of those really high quality oils that you have to be, you know, in an MLM pyramid scheme kind of thing. But years ago when I found far and wild essential oils, I was so happy because they seriously meet all those really high standards, but you don't have to be on any kind of a pyramid scheme. You can just log in and choose what you want, when you want, order your high quality oils. And I have a code for you that is an evergreen code that you can use anytime you're ordering any far and wild oils. If you just use the code solely rested, you will save 20% off your entire order anytime, all the time. So they're great oils and they are added to a lot of the things we're talking about today. So go check them out far and wild with code solely rested. Okay. Another thing I use a lot of essential oils for is my dryer balls. Years ago, I invested in some handmade wool dryer balls. I probably have, this is, I guess, the negative to dryer balls. I probably have 15 of them. And yet, sometimes I go to put a load of clothes in the dryer and there are no dryer balls in my laundry room because they wind up getting sucked up with all the clothes, put in a clothes basket, taken to another room to get folded, and then you have to go hunting for your dryer balls. So that is kind of a pain sometimes. So maybe I just need to invest in some more, but I think I probably still have the same problem. <laughs> um, but also before I tell you more about dryer balls, air drying is the best option. If you have a way to put your clothes out on a sunny day, I was going to say summer day. It doesn't have to be summer though. You can do it in the dead of winter. I have put clothes out with snow on the ground if it's a sunny day. And sometimes even without the sun, there if there's wind, or they can freeze dry. So air drying is always the best. It uses no energy and it prevents, there's no kind of static cling. So there's no need for any additional carcinogenic fabric softeners or anything like that. <coughs> and I love the fresh, clean smell that it gives your clothes. And it's it, it, it's really good for your clothes. It prevents the natural wear and tear that the dryer causes. So if I have any delicates or clothing that is like really special or important to me, I'll never put that in the dryer. I always sun dry, air dry that. Now, of course you have to be careful with the sun drying. You can sometimes also um, fade your clothing, of course, but it's it's definitely the, my preferred way to go. And I love that it makes your towels and your washcloths nice and rough and stiff. Some people hate that. Some people will only put their towels and washcloths in the dryer, never air dry them, even if they put everything else out on the clothesline because they just can't stand anything other than a really soft towel and washcloth. So while I understand that, I am not in that camp. Bill and I love the stiff ones because it's like a nice loofah that you're rubbing on your skin and it's getting off the dead skin cells. And it just feels really good to take that rough towel and scratch it across your, your wet back when you get out of the shower. So anyway, I almost never put towels or washcloths in the dryer if I can avoid it. And fabric softener sheets literally work by depositing chemicals on your clothing. Like I, I, I don't need that. I don't need extra chemicals to keep my clothes static free or smelling good or softer when all I need are some dryer balls and some essential oils because, oh, by the way, the static cling, you do need one other thing in certain times of the year, you know, when you get the really bad static and your clothing is like stuck together and you have to pull it apart. And sometimes you even see sparks. Do you ever get that? <laughs> you can avoid that by keeping a spray bottle of water close to your dryer and really dousing your wool dryer balls really well before tossing them into your dryer. And then that extra amount of water will prevent the static cling from forming in your clothes. But I 
I decided years ago I had no need for the added upon added chemicals of the fabric softener sheets. So dryer balls will make your clothes dryer actually more efficient as well as everything else that they do. Fabric softener sheets can't do that, but the dryer balls actually prevent the clothes from clumping together, especially if you have things like sheets, you know how they just can get all wadded up or jeans. The dryer balls will go in between as they're tumbling between all those layers and they actually help your dryer do a better efficient job. They So they reduce the drying time and they're allowing the air to circulate among all the fabric. They also help prevent wrinkles because they're preventing your clothes from wadding up and they prevent the static cling if you're using the water bottle that I mentioned. And um, if you're putting, I like to just put one drop of essential oil on most of the balls. I, I usually never get one on every ball that I toss in, but most of them I'll put a drop of essential oil. I will often grab a couple different essential oil jars. I have them lined up right there by my dryer and combine a couple different scents, but they, they really make your clothes smell so good, much better than dryer sheets. Cause you're choosing your own scents, you know, and the dryer balls also retain the heat of the dryer. And then they literally distribute that heat throughout the clothing. So it's one more way that they're keeping your dryer more efficient. Okay. How do you use them? It's actually so simple that I feel silly even explaining it, but I know when I first started out, I was Googling it, wondering how do I do this? So first of all, you do want to use more balls for a larger load. So if you're using, if you're doing an average, small to average load, you only need two to three dryer balls. If you have a medium to larger size load, you need at least six dryer balls. I, I often will just toss in whatever I happen to have there, which might be eight or 10 balls sometimes. Um, and then you put a drop of essential oil on most of the balls and you can spray the water if you're concerned about static cling, toss those balls right into the dryer. And it doesn't really matter if you put the balls in first and then the clothes or some clothes and layer the balls in, it doesn't matter. I will usually wind up just tossing the clothes in and the balls on top. And then uh, when they're all done, you know, as you're emptying it, try to sort the balls out and keep them separate. I have a bucket right there by the dryer because like I said earlier, otherwise you wind up having to go gather them up around the house when it's time to do another load of clothes. So what combinations do I like to use for essential oils? I really like um, peppermint and something floral. I like lavender a whole lot. And I like, um, oh, I also like orange and peppermint. And um, eucalyptus is kind of a peppermint feel to it. That's really good with grapefruit. So I like something citrus and something kind of minty for, for my laundry, but play around with it. That's part of the fun experiment and see what you really like. Okay. Next up dishwasher soap. This is, there's a couple, this one. And one other thing I'm going to talk about that are really quite new to me. This I've been doing maybe four or five months now. I love it. I don't think I'll ever go back. I still remember the first time I used my homemade dishwasher soap and I thought for sure, like I was really nervous to open the washing machine, the dishwasher and, and look at inspect everything when it was done. Cause I thought for sure it was going to be awful that there'd be spots and there'd still be dirt caked on the plates, but it worked wonderfully. And like I said, I don't think I'll ever go back. And it's so simple. It's literally three ingredients, super washing soda, which is called sodium carbonate and powdered oxygen bleach, which is called sodium percarbonate, and some table salt, just salt. Those three things, that's it. Two cups of the first two things and a half a cup of salt. And you need about, when you go to use it, about two tablespoons per dishwashing cycle. But in my little cup in my dishwasher that holds the soap, you know, there's lines that show you um, different load levels. I just always fill it to my medium load level. So I don't bother with like a scoop or a tablespoon measure. I'll just take my jar, which I have this nice flip lid on. So it's really easy to open and access. It's just a mason jar that I keep under my sink, flip open the lid, and I'll just pour the powder in till it gets to that medium line. So super easy. And the salt, <laughs> little side note here, 
when I first started making this, all I ever have is Redmond salt on hand. That's all I've purchased for probably five years now. And I remember the first time I made it thinking, am I wasting a half a cup of like the good salt? Should I have Bill stop at the store when he's out next and, you know, get me that cheap stuff. What's it called? Morton's with the girl with the little umbrella um, or the no name salt or whatever, you know, to use for, for making, for making this. And I, I decided it wasn't worth the effort. I was going to use what I had on hand. But the funny thing is, is that not too long after I realized, wait a minute, Redmond salt has minerals. They have over 60 trace minerals in their salt. By the way, this episode is actually sponsored by Redmond. So this is perfect that I'm talking about this. Um, but those trace minerals are actually involved in all kinds of protective properties on our skin. I always think about it as, oh, I'm glad I'm adding extra minerals to my diet by using this salt, but I've never once thought about using it on my skin, but trace minerals are absorbed into our skin. And there's so many important protective properties for our skin to have those extra trace minerals. So they've actually been shown to essentially fight the damage of excessive sun exposure and wrinkles and to maintain moisture in our skin. So why on earth wouldn't I want to add a little bit extra minerals into, I mean, it doesn't matter as much for the dishwasher soap because that's not really rubbing on my skin, but I'll share some more recipes moving forward that, you know, your skin is actually touching your dishwashing or your dish, your liquid dish soap, your dishwashing soap. I always have trouble deciding how to call those things. So you know what I'm talking about, dishwasher soap versus dishwashing liquid soap. Um, but anyway, why not add some extra minerals, right? You can never go wrong with that. So go to solelyrested.com slash salt for my favorite things that I get from Redmond, not just the salt itself, but lots of other great things and use code solely rested to save 15%. That's a new code over the years. I had a previous one that's been updated. So it is now solely rested for 15% anytime, all the time when you are buying anything Redmond, because I love them. They're amazing. In fact, before we go on, let me just fill you in on Redmond Salt, since they are sponsoring this episode, whether you are growing it, raising it, or preparing it, your food can have extra nutrients added to it in a one really simple way, your salt. You probably already know that the salt you add to your food matters, and it shouldn't contain any artificial ingredients, any artificial additives, any unhealthy pollutants. So check to see where the salt comes from that you're using. If you're using Redmond Real Salt, it comes from a mine in Utah that was created by an ancient seabed, no chance of pollution, you know the source. And that's how you want it if it's coming into your kitchen, right? You'd rather not have pollution in it. But did you know that salt is an important way to up the quality of your food if you're growing some in your garden or if you're raising some in your backyard? Because salt is an important nutrient for gardens and for backyard chickens and for pasture-raised pigs and for a whole lot more, something that I never really thought of until rather recently. So I will link to more details and the products that I love using from Redmond Agriculture, as well as Redmond Real Salt, over at that same page, solelyrested.com slash salt. And you can use the code solely rested for any of those items there, whether you want to find out more about improving the quality of your eggs or your meat birds with some salt added to their diet, some free, free ranging salt or the salt for the pigs or the salt for the garden, any of that stuff. Solely rested is the code you want to use to save on any of those. Okay, so let's get back to my list here. Laundry detergent. This is the other new one to me. This has only been about a month now. Actually, knowing that I was going to record this episode, I'm like, I got to bite the bullet. I've got to do that last cleaner that's been on my mind that I have not tried. And I was really, I was more nervous about this than the dishwashing soap. I really thought it would completely fail. And I kind of hated the time that I would spend making it and you know, buying the ingredients for it to just completely fail. And, you know, then I'm like, well, do I tell them that it failed or do I just not add that particular thing to my episode when I record that? <laughs> but I have good news for you. It didn't fail. So here's the items that you need. All of these items, by the way, are going to be included. They are included on my pantry checklist. If you have downloaded that in the past, 
know that just this week it has been completely renovated, <laughs> completely upgraded. I have added things to it that weren't there before. I have checked all the, the links and made sure everything is good there. So if you want to grab that, you will have exact information of all these products that I'm mentioning in this episode and links to where I buy them. Of course, if you want to go out to Walmart for some of these, you can get it there, but it's still nice to glance at the pantry checklist and see the link that I put there so you can see what the product look like, looks like and know what you need, right? So go to solelyrested.com slash pantry to access the pantry checklist. Okay, for the laundry detergent, I use a one bar of pure Castile soap. I use four cups of hot water and a cup of Arm & Hammer's Super Washing Soda is what it's called, half a cup of borax. And once the soap and water, when you combine them has cooled, you then add some essential oil. Only about 10 to 15 drops is all that you need. And that's going to give you a couple gallons total. Um, you know what? Instead of breaking down each step, I'm just going to add all this information to that page, solelyrested.com slash pantry. There will be a link there for all of these details, for all of these recipes. Because if you're like me, this is confusing to be listening to it. Like I can't get the recipe. Usually I'm driving or cleaning dishes. I can't write down all these recipes. So go to solelyrested.com slash pantry and you can access all of that. Um, and I will usually, I like to use lavender or rosemary or tea tree oil. Jasmine's a nice one. But you know, whatever you want to use will work well for you for the laundry detergent. Um, I will say that it's a weird consistency and it never mixes up totally. So it, it, it just stays this way. It's like, I can't explain it. Like there's soap just, um, suspended in the water and it never like falls to the bottom. It's always suspended. And also there's the confusing factor that once you make it, it's only a quarter of what you need to be putting in your laundry every time. So in other words, if you need a cup worth of laundry detergent, you need a quarter cup worth of your homemade recipe and three quarters cups water. You can very easily keep an old uh, laundry detergent um, container, you know, to pour out of and fill it up one quarter of the way with your homemade detergent, keep the rest in a bucket with the lid on it in the back hall or out in the garage and then fill the rest of your container up with water, shake it up well, just let it sit there by the wash and it's ready for you to dispense directly. Or you can keep the bucket there by the washing machine and keep a quarter cup and a three quarter cup, you know, and add that accordingly to your wash. Okay. Dishwashing liquid soap. For that, I use two cups of water, a tablespoon of kosher salt. And this is one of those that it comes into play that I like that it has the added trace minerals because the dishwashing liquid soap, my hands are submerged in that all the time. So why not have a few extra minerals in there that are getting into my skin, making it softer, doing all those other good things. And I use a cup of Castile soap and that's it. That's all you need is the water, the kosher salt and the Castile soap. But you can also add, which I always do, essential oils, 10 drops for this amount. And if you wanted, you can add four tablespoons or less of lemon juice to give it more of a cleaning power. And you can add a few tablespoons of olive oil to add extra moisturizing to keep your skin moist. And that's it. I, for that, you know, you can buy a squeeze bottle that you can put it in, but I actually have just kept around the old soap bottle that I you know, used to purchase and, and add my DIY soap to that bottle. Okay. Candles. Let's talk about that. When paraffin wax is lit and burning, it's releasing those VOCs into your home and they're toxic. So you think that this candle is so relaxing and wonderful and smells so good, but it's not so good. So I'm not going to lie. I still have some around because I love candles and I'm just, I have not totally purged. Like I had, haven't I haven't just thrown away the perfectly good candle in my mind. It's a perfectly good candle. I love that scent, but 
I'm not buying new ones. Um, when I'm buying them, I'm making sure that they are completely VOC free or Bill has been making beeswax candles. We have bees, we have for quite a few years. So he has been making our candles from the beeswax. And that is a wonderful alternative if you know a beekeeper that wants to sell you some beeswax candles. I also really like some battery operated candles that I got. Now there's all different kinds and some of them look really cheesy, but I was really picky about it. And I found some, I really loved that the flame looks so relaxing and nice. I wouldn't say it looks totally real. Like if you really analyze it and stare at it, you'd be like, ah, I don't think that's a real candle, but it's so nice. And they have remotes. One remote goes to all of the candles. So I can have candles in three different rooms and walk around with my remote and click them on or off whenever I want them. And they're rechargeable. So I like every three or four days, if it's winter and I'm lighting them every single night, it's probably about every three or four days that I'm recharging them, but I just line them all up, plug them in overnight. And then the next day, put them back in their places. And that combination of, you know, Bill's beeswax candles, using essential oils and diffusers for the scent and using these um, rechargeable candles really makes me happy because I'm a candle person. I've always loved candles, but this is an alternative that gets rid of the toxic VOCs. So makes me happy. All right. It's summertime in New England. Bug spray is extremely important. They say that mosquitoes are our state bird because they get pretty big, pretty obnoxious. It's pretty insane. <laughs> we went on a hike yesterday and Gail and I are like swatting at the mosquito and I had my bug spray, but we were putting it on like every 15 minutes. And before we reapplied, there'd be more mosquitoes because it was a bad day. There'd been lots of rain that makes it a lot worse, but bug spray essential here in new England. And it's so easy. All you have to combine, just get some of those little spray bottles. So you can just carry it around in your bag. Or even I literally was carrying it in my back pocket on our hike, little spray bottle, put two ounces of witch hazel and two ounces of water. And then anywhere from maybe 15 to 20 drops of essential oils. The best ones for this purpose are lavender, cedar, eucalyptus, cinnamon, lemongrass, peppermint, and cloves is a good one. So whatever combination you want of those, it will keep the bugs at bay. And then let's talk about an all-purpose cleaner. This is one to just have in a spray bottle under the kitchen sink or somewhere in, on the corner of the counter that you can use to pretty much clean up any mess in the kitchen to keep the counter clean. There's no chemicals, nothing toxic. You need three different things, a half a cup of white vinegar, two tablespoons of baking soda, and about 10 drops of essential oil. I recommend tea tree for this one. As far as the vinegar, I should say, if you're, if you have real marble counters or granite or stone, then you don't want to use vinegar. Instead, use rubbing alcohol, or it sounds kind of funny, you could even use vodka, but don't use vinegar for marble, granite, or stone countertops. Anyway, you put all that into a 32-ounce spray bottle, give it a good shake, and that is going to keep your kitchen toxic-free and clean. Okay, for all of these things I mentioned for the dishwasher soap, I, I love to use mason jars and a reusable spray bottle lid that I keep on it because it's glass. So I'm avoiding extra plastic and it's just better for the environment. I just like Mason jars, you know, so that's what I do, but you can buy, you know, the, the spray bottles anywhere in your local hardware store. One last little thing. That's all my recipes for today, but I do want to caution you because it's, it's so easy to get caught up when you see the big word natural on a cleaner at the store. They even like make them different colors sometimes like pastel colors and put them in a separate section of the store. So you tend to think, oh, this is the section of the good stuff, right? The better for you stuff. And maybe it is a little bit better for you, but just because a product has the word natural on it does not mean it only has natural ingredients. Natural is not a regulated term. Any manufacturer can plop that word wherever they want on their product and there's no regulation over it. So it pretty much means nothing, to be honest. Um, but conventional companies can 
you know, add like a little bit of rosemary oil maybe to this toxic stew of chemicals. And because they put that little bit of rosemary, they can slap on made with natural ingredients and they can make that phrase as big as they want right across the bottle. And you go, oh, this one's better for my family. It actually might be worse for your family, but they added a little bit of rosemary oil, you know? So just be careful and cautious of that. Marketing is so deceiving. <laughs> but if you're making it yourself, guys, you know what's in it and you know it genuinely is natural. But anyway, be a little more discriminative when you're reading your labels. Um, unscented, free of, dot, 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 biodegradable, non-toxic, all of these terms are unregulated. So consumers really are not, quote unquote, protected whatsoever by any laws with any of those terms that are slapped on the cleaners that you're buying. So um there you have it. I hope this has encouraged you and not discouraged you. Cause like I said in the beginning, I know it can be so overwhelming and I try to really just focus on, well, this is okay. Cause these are the things I can do and it feels really good. So be sure to grab the pantry checklist. So all those different ingredients I was tossing around the names of, they're all on the pantry checklist. There's a section on there for DIY cleaning supplies. So that's where you can find that. Go to solelyrested.com slash pantry, solelyrested.com slash pantry. Okay. Whew. Thanks for listening, guys. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about this actual episode or this season or the podcast in general. And if you take a quick second and leave a five-star review, you will actually also be entered into that really fun giveaway I told you about last episode that's going on right now. One winner is going to get a copy of every single book from every author who has been a guest or is coming up as a guest in this season here on the podcast. And you will be helping us encourage more people. And that's the reason that we're here. So I greatly appreciate a review. If you take a second to go over and leave one, if you don't know how to do that, go to sullyrested.com slash podcast. And I give you the details and a link that you can follow to do and make it really easy for you. Solelyrested.com slash podcast, and you'll be entered to win that slew of awesome books that are going to help you with simple steps towards improving your health. Also, don't forget solelyrested.com slash salt to check out all the salt products for your kitchen, as well as your gardens and your backyard animals. And again, solelyrested.com slash pantry to get that pantry checklist. Okay, that's it. Remember guys, it is easy to feel overwhelmed. It is easy to forget how blessed we are to live this life. So enjoy the simple everyday efforts today. It's not easy, but it's a really good life.